The film begins with a stunning drone picture of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which sets the tone for what follows. It depicts a high-stakes chase with police helicopters, patrol cars, and FBI agents, all accompanied by a suspenseful soundscape. Their combined purpose is to find our protagonist, Ray Cooper. Ray finds himself in a violent argument with the distraught FBI agent, who is desperately attempting to get him to follow her directions. Instead of complying, he takes a daring leap from a structure into the water below. Years earlier, we shift to a tranquil wooded location where Ray Cooper spends quality time with his family. Following this gorgeous scenario, we see Ray and his family in a hospital's emergency department. Ray's wife, Amanda Cooper, receives the tragic news that her cancer has returned, leaving her with little alternatives for treating this deadly condition. A doctor later approaches Ray and suggests a therapy option for Amanda. This medication is in the final stages of FDA approval and is the only possible remedy for her disease. However, the drug's maker, BioPrime, unexpectedly removes it from the market, leaving Ray and Amanda devastated. Amanda's poor condition has not improved and the market remains closed to patients. After obtaining the bad news, we are introduced to Simon Keeley, the CEO of Bioprime, on a news talk show. He's having a heated conversation with Diana Morgan, a U.S. congresswoman who has taken a strong stand against Bioprime owing to their dubious business methods. The basis of their disagreement is the expensive expense of pharmaceuticals, and it is during this dispute that Ray Cooper joins the conversation as a caller. Ray describes how his wife's life is hanging in the balance after Bioprime pulled the medicine sparrow off the market. He warns Mr. Keeley that if his wife does not make it, he will have effectively sealed his doom. As Amanda's life draws to a close, Ray and his daughter Rachel spend their final moments with her as she breathes her last. Ray, filled by grief, walks around the hospital hallways, crying and overcome with anguish. Meanwhile, Rachel softly sings Amanda's favorite childhood song, creating a beautiful backdrop for this sorrowful occasion. Six months later, as Ray goes about his daily routine, he receives an important phone call from a journalist called Martin Bennett. Martin informs Ray that justice might be within sight. He reveals that Simon Keeley has committed indictable charges, which could lead to his imprisonment. Martin and Ray agree to meet, and Ray follows Martin's specific instructions including which trains to take and where to exit, as they approach a potential turning point in their search of justice. Martin Bennett, the secret informant, directs Ray to swap platforms and arrive at a specified train stop by following a man dressed in denim. Unbeknownst to them, Ray's daughter is discreetly following them. Bennett provides critical information, exposing Bioprime's fraudulent transactions with offshore entities linked to Simon Keeley. A guy wearing a cap suddenly assaults Bennett, stabbing him in the stomach. Ray's daughter steps in and helps subdue the assailant. As Ray tries to save his injured daughter, the attacker hits again, throwing him through a glass window and onto the platform. Two years later, Ray's daughter, Rachel, begins fighting training. Meanwhile, Congresswoman Diana Morgan and Simon Keeley introduce a bill aimed at providing affordable medication, implying a shady collaboration for personal gain. On the television, Ray tells his daughter about his continued goal to destroy Mr. Keeley and find the person who attempted to kill him. The scene transitions to Keeley arriving at a location and Ray casually entering while wearing a cap to conceal his identity. He takes a suit from the venue's rear and changes to blend in. During Keeley's address at the occasion, Ray unintentionally spills whiskey on his clothes, sending him to the restroom with his security team. Ray subdues the guards and confronts Keeley about Martin Bennett's death and the bribery permission. Keeley identifies Vinod Shah as the mastermind. During a violent scuffle, Ray unintentionally shoots one of Keeley's security guards. In the end, Ray kills Keeley. Back home, he tells his daughter to pack. While at the scene, a security guard named Mr. Ashbury deals with the aftermath. Under questioning by FBI agent Sarah Mears, Mr. Ashbury acknowledges that the person who killed Mr. Keeley had previously threatened his life. The FBI has identified Ray as the source of the threat and is keeping a close eye out for any signs of him or his vehicle. Meanwhile, Ray's daughter, Rachel, calls Agent Sarah from a payphone to claim that Mr. Keeley's death was an accident, hoping to refute the FBI's claim that her father was the murderer. 
Sarah attempts to urge Rachel to obtain a disposable phone, but Rachel quickly terminates the connection and enters a motel. Ray takes a snooze inside, completely unconscious of the approaching agents. When the doorbell rings, he wakes Rachel and, in a face-off, eludes a hitman armed with an SMG. A battle breaks out, with stray rounds fired. Ray wins, tying a belt around his opponent and hurling him down the stairs. As he moves through the facility, Ray encounters another hitman, knocking him against a wall and using a screwdriver to his advantage. He eventually leaps out a window to continue their fight. Ray defeats the hitman, dispatching him with a perfect shot to the neck. The FBI then conducts a residential raid. While looking at Cooper's family portrait, Agent Sarah is notified by a co-worker, who confirms Ray as the top suspect. New information shows Ray's vehicle leaving a motel 70 miles from his home, coinciding with a double killing. This suggests that the perpetrators were not FBI agents, but Bioprime associates wanting vengeance for the late Simon Keeley. Meanwhile, Martin Bennett's murderer, Santos, looks through cars at a dealership, staining the store owner's blazer with blood. After stealing a vehicle, he leaves. Ray and his daughter sought safety in a snow-covered woodland. Ray prepares for oncoming attackers by charting their itinerary. Rachel contacts Detective Sarah, informing her of their pursuit. During the call, Rachel discusses her relationship with her mom. While Sarah assures her that she can persuade her father, her mother would have approved of her conduct. Meanwhile, Santos assembles an explosive shotgun. Ray and his daughter leave the woodland, going towards the forest, near Vinod Shah's mansion, the man thought to have persuaded Simon Keeley to take Sparrow off the market. They see a car lurking in the darkness. Shah escapes the mansion in a fleet of Chevrolet SUVs, but Ray blocks their way with an excavator, crashing with one of the cars. Santos approaches from the other side, igniting the lead SUV with his explosive shotgun. The node flees, but is apprehended by Ray. Holding him at gunpoint, Ray demands answers about Martin's murder. Before Santos can divulge anything, he shoots Shaw, killing him. Ray and his daughter flee, but Santos fires three shots at them. They elude him. Rachel informs her father that Shaw's murderer is also responsible for Martin's death. Curious as to why, Ray shifts cars to keep low, but it does not work. While driving, he notices the assassin in a diner and calmly sits beside him. The assassin admits that he was hired not by Shah, but by a higher-up, and that his mission was to eliminate anyone who could expose their criminality. Ray contemplates the ramifications of this knowledge. The man has three possibilities. Expose both of them to the FBI, go into hiding, or find the man's boss and kill them. Santos admits that his boss is none other than Diana Morgan, the congresswoman who first opposed Bioprime but later engaged in corrupt practices. She hired Santos to assassinate Martin, afraid he would reveal details about her Senate wrongdoing and corruption. Ray and Rachel return to the city, but the FBI tracks them down, resulting in a furious pursuit. To come to a halt, Ray turns the city streets into a racetrack, but traffic obstacles impede their path. They dump the car and depart on foot, leaving behind the perplexed FBI. Ray navigates a crowd at an NFL game while hounded by agents. He reaches the stadium roof, which is lighted by a hovering helicopter. Agent Sarah opens out to Ray and laments the unfortunate occurrences in his life. Flashbacks reveal that Ray did not instigate the mayhem following his wife's murder, but rather his daughter Rachel, who was in a trance-like state, as her father died long ago. In the ambulance, Rachel unexpectedly turns on the FBI agents attempting to help her. She kicks one agent while laying on the stretcher and elbows another as she rises, tearing off her neck brace. Her escape plan includes attempting to drive the ambulance off the road, eventually forcing it to topple and freeing her. Rachel then reclines on a bench and sings a calming song from her mother's repertoire. Her heartfelt conversation with her father displays her sanity and commitment to bring the perpetrators to justice. Diana Morgan promises in a news conference to abolish corruption at the nexus of business. Rachel is in the crowd, as is the man who had previously targeted her and killed her father. Rachel exits a yellow taxi and enters a facility where Diana Morgan is hosting an after-party for her press conference. 
Rachel enters the office with a keycard and meets Santos. Santos accidentally kicks her out of a window during an attempted attack, causing her to fall back onto the scaffold she had previously climbed. He fires a couple of shots as she flees. Rachel takes cover behind crates and disarms Santos with her jacket in a brilliant maneuver. They both end themselves in the water, knives in hand, and begin a fatal duel. Santos causes a terrible gash on Rachel's forearm and dominates the fight, even attempting to choke her underwater. Just when she is about to take her last breath, her father's voice encourages her to fight. Rachel manages to turn the tables on Santos by repeatedly stabbing him in the abdomen until he is motionless in a pool of blood. Rachel is miraculously alive when she returns to Diana's workplace. She threatens to expose Diana's corruption and manipulation, but Rachel responds, leaving Diana traumatized and calling for security. The FBI obtains information on Rachel's visit to Diana Morgan's campaign office. The discovery has the FBI perplexed about Rachel's motivation for targeting a legislator. However, as Rachel shares a taped interaction with Diana, the puzzle pieces fit into place. They expose Diana's involvement in corrupt deals with Bioprime to guarantee her candidacy. Meanwhile, Rachel flees the country on a plane bringing the movie to the end. Thanks for watching. If you are new don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.